Hey, this is Eli Paperboy Reed. Welcome to the Blues Kitchen. <laughs> Eli Paperboy Reed is a soul and R&B singer from Massachusetts. After spending a couple of years immersing himself in the music scenes across Mississippi and Chicago, Eli released his debut LP back in 2005. Four more critically acclaimed albums followed, with his latest recording, My Way Home, being released in 2016. We discuss Eli's love and passion for gospel music, meeting and playing with Mitty Collier in Chicago, and... As is customary in this series, Eli performs his very own version of Sending Up My Timber by Roscoe Robinson and the Blind Boys of Mississippi. Eli Paperboy Reed, welcome to the Blues Kitchen. Thanks for having me, good to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. So we um, met for the first time last night. That's right. We came down to Blues Kitchen to hang out and see Big Joe Louie. Mm -hmm. right? What brings you over to the UK this time? I'm here working with a, a band that I've been working with for a little while, kind of doing some production stuff. And uh, it's actually, I've got my, my wife and my little uh, baby daughter here with me. So it's, we're doing some touristy stuff as well, kind of packing, work, work and, and play trip at the same time, which is great. That's I've never, cool. uh, never had a chance to, uh, to see London in a, in, a, in a touristy light, which is nice for me. So what are your top five London tourist attractions whilst you're in town? You know, it's really not about me, it's about the baby. So <laughs> whatever, whatever we can do to make sure that she has a good time. So we'll, you know, we'll go and uh, see the, the Christmas lights on the Thames and stuff like that. I think that'll be nice. It's just stuff, stuff that, uh, that I would never normally do, but, but I think that she'll love. Sure, stuff us Londoners never normally do. Yeah, either. right. I mean, I live <laughs> in New York. I have never been to the Statue of Liberty, so, you know. <laughs> there you go. So in a short while, we're going to be talking about a gospel tune. It's mm -hmm. pretty um, close to your heart. Blind Boys of Mississippi, right? That's right. But I'd like to maybe just ask you a few things about your, I don't want to say musical journey because it sounds so cheesy, but um, when you graduated high school, mm -hmm. you moved to Clarksdale, Mississippi. That's right. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Can I assume that music and the mythology of the, the place is what took you down there? It was a combination of things. Uh, I think probably first and foremost that I didn't really want to go to college at that point. And I, okay. didn't, I, didn't, I got into a few colleges. I, I, I did like well in high school in some respects and also very poorly in other respects. So I kind of like, <laughs> I just focused on what I wanted to do, which was music at the time. And through kind of a, a bizarre set of circumstances, got this offer to work for this radio station in Clarksdale that was kind of going to restart itself as an all blues format radio station. And the, uh, the guy that was running it kind of got in touch with me and was like, would you want to come down and, and help me work with this? So I, somehow convinced my parents to let me go ahead and do that. How and old were you at this time? I was 18. I, graduated. I literally moved to Clarksdale a week after graduating from high school. Wow. One, yeah, so I was 18. And as soon as I got there, the bottom kind of fell out of the whole thing, and the guy had no financial backing, and there was really, it was not a thing that was ever going to really happen. Okay. But I was there, and I was kind of ensconced at that point, and I kind of had to make it work. So tell us about your music when you were in Clarkstown. I assume you were singing and playing at the time. I mean, I was. I sang and played in high school, but, but I didn't really like, I didn't have a kind of a musical identity. And I think that, you know, for me as a teenager, I associated Mississippi Delta with like Sun House and Charlie Patton and that kind of stuff. Yes. But really what's going on there for the local audiences is more like Southern soul music, like yeah. Tyrone Davis or Obie Wright or Lattimore or stuff like Joe, mm -hmm. Otis Clay. And that was stuff that I knew really well, too. I had gotten into soul music really early on. And so I could sing and play that as well as I could, and, and, and kind of with more authority than I could play some you know, music that was 80 years older than that, you know, whatever. So it, was, it was, made sense for me. And, and I was you know, around and, and wanted to play for not a lot of money. So that <laughs> gave me the opportunity to go <laughs> and play with a lot of the, the guys down there. I mean, I played country blues, too. I played a lot with... Uh, with this drummer, Sam Carr, who was mm -hmm. the son of Robert Nighthawk, and we played a lot of duo stuff. He was in his 80s at the time, and, and I was, you know, 18, so we played drums and, and, and guitar uh, duo stuff, and that was really fun. So feel free to name drop. I mean, who, yeah, who yeah. were you hanging out with and playing with at the time? I mean, just a lot of guys that were local. Unfortunately, a lot of guys have since passed away. I became a member of the Wesley Jefferson Southern Soul Band. Okay. I played guitar and sang. Uh, it turned out Wesley really was just the guy that had all the equipment and he played bass like sometimes but most of the time he just like hung out oh really and it took us from the you know gig to gig and stuff like that okay and we had a, res a long running residency at the place called the Dewdrop Inn in Shelby Mississippi which mm -hmm. is like even smaller than Clarksdale a real small town like maybe a few thousand people wow we play every Sunday night there 
And I played uh, and was taught a lot by a guy named uh, Terry Williams. He goes by Big T. And uh, the T was really, you know, he's tough on me. A lot of those guys were very hard on me in a good way. And uh, that's where the paper boy came from because I'd be kind of waiting on the side of the stage to play. You know, I was like they would take a break in the set and let me get up and do a few tunes. And I, I had see. my little newsboy hat that I wore that belonged to my grandfather. I said, oh, here's paper boy again. Let him, let him get up and do a tune. <laughs> I did not so know that. That's where it came from. And that's, that's here we are however many years later. Amazing. So just before we get to your, your tune and the story around that, um, you did what a lot of other great blues men and women did and moved up to Chicago mm -hmm. after that. Um, and I'm kind of asking you the same question in a way, but was that a musical thing as well? Were you because you, you worked at a radio station? Right. right? That was that was. I went to Chicago to go to college. Uh, right. So I applied to colleges when I was living in Mississippi, and I was accepted to the University of Chicago, which is uh, a quite reputable institution of higher learning. And I wasn't really that prepared for the rigor uh, that that entailed. So when I got there, I ended up spending a lot more time looking for records and playing <laughs> in church. Uh, and I, so I, but I did a radio show on the, on the, on the school station there. And it uh, turned out that the guy that did the show before me was this guy named Bob Abrahamian, who had a show that he had just started previously uh, to when I got there called Sitting in the Park, which is kind of, had become a, a really legendary sweet soul show. And that I also met a woman named Minnie Collier, who I heard from a friend of a friend that she had worked at the university. So I've like just looked in the alumni directory or whatever and found her name and phone number and I called her up because she was no way you yeah, cold called yeah she, she was a soul singer you know so and and if, and I was a fan of her records so I called her and I said hey you know I've got this radio show I'd love for you to come down and she says well I don't really sing secular music anymore but you know I have this church uh, and I had told her I was a musician so I said, why don't you come down and play or she came to meet me actually she came to my dorm room. And there, no was a, there was a grand piano there, so I sat at the piano and we played. And, so and Richie Cody, I came to your dorm room. Yeah, and, and, then, and then I got the job, and from then on I was the minister of music for her. So your choice, which you're going to be forming in a short while, is Blind Boys of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And we've had a few messages backwards and forwards about yeah. this, but I get the feeling this is quite close to your heart, this tune. Yeah, so the, the, the singer on who, who originally recorded it uh, when he was leading with the Blind Boys was a guy named Roscoe Robinson, who was actually the first sighted member of the Blind Boys of Mississippi. And the tune is Sending Up My Timber. Sending Tim. Up My Timber is the name of it. And Roscoe later on became a, a soul singer and had some successful uh, R&B and soul records, including a, a few that have been kind of big on the, uh, the northern scene here. Mm -hmm. um, but he started out as a gospel singer and really was one of the, the greatest. He, he, he seceded the greatest gospel shouter of all time, the late Archie Brown Lee, as the ble he was the, the hand-picked successor for the Blind Boys. So Archie was dying of cancer, and he called Roscoe to his bedside and said, I want you to take the group from me yeah. when I'm gone. So Roscoe became the lead, and this was the first big record they had after Archie passed away in 1959. So Roscoe recorded this song, and a few years later became a soul singer or whatever. And then I met him in 2007, we, my band and I were hired to, to back him and a few other singers on some shows in New York and Chicago. It's quite an honor. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, and that was kind of our first tour, and Roscoe and I got to be fast friends. It was, uh, you know, he, he was, again, also hard on me, but, <laughs> but, uh, but really good, and, and I learned so much from him, from, from performance, just everything. You know, he's just like, he's the kind of guy that just like dispenses advice, and all of it is worth listening to. And also, you know, now he's almost 90 years old, you know, so at that, at that point he was in his, you know, late 70s, early 80s when we first knew, uh, met each other. And I got to work with him several other times, uh, you know, throughout the years. And then uh, he got to know my wife uh, or my girlfriend at the time. And when we were getting married, uh, we asked him to come and sing at the ceremony to be the guest of honor, really, and to sing Sending Up My Timber because it's a song about building your home in heaven. You're doing your good deeds, you're setting up your timber so you can build your home, right? So the idea is that, you know, when you get married, you're working in a relationship, you're setting up your timber, you're building your home together. That was our thought process, at least, and he was honored to do it. And it's, been, it's one of my favorite songs, really, you know, a very uh, beautiful metaphor, I think, and, and a really strong message, and, and I think one of, one of his greatest performances, and, and he sang it at the wedding, and, and it, was, it was a really beautiful moment for me, for sure. Tear jerker? Absolutely, yeah. Not dry in the house, no, I imagine? No, So just a couple of things about that tune in particular. Do you remember your first time 
hearing that tune? Was it well before that you, you'd met Roscoe? No, you know, I think actually the first time that I heard it was when he, he wanted to do it in one of our shows. I really... And, cause I, and I didn't have... A lot of those recordings are quite hard to find. Yeah. And since I've tracked all that stuff down, but, but he requested to do it and I had to find it. Uh, and I listened to it then and, and was really blown away. And, I, you know, I, this is, it's just, I mean, Roscoe says that he, that he wrote it. It's the kind of thing where a lot of gospel music is kind of pieced together from, you know, previous stuff and, and different metaphors. But I think he did put the thing together in the way that it is. Yes. And I think that, that that's something, there's something to be said for that. He created that arrangement. So when I first heard it and got to play it behind him, that was the first time that, that I experienced the song. Incredible. Yeah. Well. Wow. I think maybe it's time for your performance. Shall we? Would you All like right. to kindly introduce your tune? All right. I'm Eli Paperboy Reed, and I'm about to play for you Sending Up My Timber, originally recorded by Roscoe Robinson and the Blind Boys of Mississippi. Thank you. 